The older wine is not the new wine. It is the, it is the fermented wine. It is the false teaching. Okay? So let's go to Isaiah 28. Isaiah 28, verse 7 and 9. And this is a warning to Jerusalem in this chapter. But they also have erred through wine and through strong drink are out of the way. The priests and the prophet have erred through strong drink. They are swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way through strong drink. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment. For all the tables are full of vomit and filthiness so that there is no place clean. Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Father, I just thank you right now for today. I thank you for your word, O oh God. I thank you that your word is truth. It is like, um, like drops of rain, fresh rain from heaven, Lord, into our hearts. And I pray today, Father, for those who are watching. I pray, O oh God, that those who may be... Um, oblivious to all of this, oh God, that you would enlighten their eyes, you would enlighten their ears and their heart, Lord, that you would bring fresh revelation to their heart, oh God, today, that they would know, Lord, that um, you are speaking to them in a way, Lord, uh, that will bring them freedom and liberty, because you said yourself, Lord, whom the sun sets free is free indeed, and Father, I thank you that, that you have given me the opportunity to share this word, and I, and I just pray for all my brothers and sisters out there, oh God, that you would just expand them, you would stretch their, their borders, oh God, and bring them into a greater intimacy with you, God, a greater love and understanding of who you are for them. And Father, I ask that you would take the smoke screen off of them, oh God. Those that have been uh, in a place of delusion, in a place of um, blindness, oh God, that you would remove that smoke screen, oh God, and bring your church into truth, oh God. Bring her into holy truth, uh, a reverential fear of knowing that you are the almighty God, the all-powerful one. Father, I thank you today in Jesus' name that your word will set the captive free in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Okay, and Holy Spirit, I welcome you here today to be my teacher and my guide through this word. So, here we have the prophet and the priest have erred through strong drink. Well, again, you could look at that. Yes, that could be literally, and it makes sense that it could be literally, but I have to believe that, um, again, for what God has showed me, that um, they have been intoxicated with wrong teaching because um, it says that they erred in vision and they stumble in judgment. When you do not have truth, when your house is not built upon the rock, upon the firm foundation of the word, Jesus said this gospel will be preached throughout all the earth. Not the gospel of man, not the traditions of man, not the doctrines of man, not your opinions or your beliefs or, or whatever else you want to you wanna state your belief system on. It has to be the Word of God. It has to be the understanding and the interpretation of what the Holy Spirit is bringing to light here in this Word. And you have to know that. And if you're hungry for truth, no matter, no matter what the cost, if you desire truth, no matter what the shaking will come to your temple, if you desire it, He will give it to you. Hallelujah. So, that's what I believe. If, if you are... Feasting and drinking on fermented wine, you will err in vision, you will err in judgment. And that's what we see a lot in Christianity. We see the, the priests and the prophet, the leaders of today, the majority of them are falling. And I'm not here to judge them, but I'm here to wake up the church. I'm here to say, open your eyes, people. Open your ear gate. Open your spirit. Come off from sitting on your lees and compromising and say, Lord, what is truth? Show me what truth is. Lead me in the way that I need to go, and he will do it. Because the leaders of today are, are causing his, your, the sheep of, of the pasture to scatter. He's causing the sheep to be scattered to the north, to the south and the east and the west. But God is going to bring back his sheep, that remnant of people, hallelujah, because he's, he will not tolerate it any longer. And if I've repeated myself with this, back in August he gave me a word, I'll repeat it again, and he said that many icons are about to fall. And I'll tell you right now, we're seeing on TV, um, in one week I saw in a program on TV, two pastors uh, had fallen, um, and of course they're in the States, they're coming from the States, um, 
and I don't know why. I mean, there's a couple that I know of in Canada that has fallen. And I'm not here to, you know, we got to pray for these people. We have to pray for these people. Let me tell you that if you don't lift up your leaders and if all you're doing is judging them and criticizing them and pointing out the sin, yes, you can uh, identify the sin and, and, you know, you don't have to sit under these leaders. But I'm telling you right now, get your eyes off the man and off the podium and off the, that because it is all about, uh, Getting, getting your eyes on Jesus when, when really the church has had their eyes fixed on the podium, on the place of where pride and, and the fall of man takes place. It, well, it's in the heart, but you know what I'm saying, okay? So anyway, I got on the rabbit trail there. Okay, so looking at verse 10 of Isaiah 28. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith he may cause the weary to rest. Are you weary from all the problems of Christianity? Are you weary from listening to all the uh, disruption that's going on in Christianity? Well, don't let that shake you. And if it has shaken you, if it's discouraged you or made you hopeless, I encourage you to get into the secret place. Get into that closet time with God and seek him. Because if you have been shaken by a lot of the falling that's going on in Christianity, or it has caused you to backslide or to uh, be angry, then your foundation was never Christ. I'm sorry. If you are founded upon the rock, if you are founded upon the word, that when one falls, yes, you will grieve for them. Yes, you will, you will feel sad for them and, and your heart will go out to them. But it shouldn't shake the foundation that you have built. So if it's the foundation of the word and the foundation of the gospel of Jesus Christ and him and, and relationship with him, then you will stand strong. So I encourage you to get into that secret place. But the word of the Lord in verse 13, it says, was unto them precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. So the um, Babylonian system will snare you the teaching will intoxicate you and cause you to err, and your vision and your judgment will be wrong, okay? So, we look back again at this word drunk as a symbol. One of the meanings was delusions, okay? So what the Lord is saying is that the church is in a place of delusion in the night, okay? What's a delusion? It's a false idea, a false opinion. It means an unshakable belief indicating a severe mental disorder. Well, that's pretty, uh, pretty heavy to, to say that the church has a mental disorder. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, I, you know, for me, I love the way God speaks to me and, and he, he makes things pretty clear to me. And then uh, I have to uh, kind of repeat what he tells me, so that's what I'm doing. And, and as you look up words and you see the interpretation of words, you get the just of what God is feeling or saying, you know. And, and yes, God is a God of love and grace, but, you know, he's also a God of correction, a God of wrath. And for those out you, for, that, for you out there who think that God does not bring correction or God does not um, bring out face value the state she's in, the church, then you better look at your Bibles again because... You can't leave out the, the Old Testament and just live in the New Testament. You have to have a balance of everything. Amen? Okay, so a mental disorder, a severe mental disorder. That's, that's pretty, I don't know. When I read that, I thought, wow. So what God is saying is that the church is in a place of delusion. She has a false opinion, a false idea of what truly is going on in Christianity. I, you know, there, there's... Um, if you look at the seasons of the Lord, um, his season is not our season. It, it's like um, his seasons are the feasts, I, and that's a whole other study, but, um, you know, about the, the, the Feast of Tabernacles, and knowing what season God is in is very important. And I spoke on that a little while ago, that we were living in a time of a Keros moment, that it was an opportune time for God to move in our lives. And, and that we, we should get a hold of that opportune time. And I mean, God is always willing to move. I believe that, you know, but, you know, he looks at the heart and he does, he will feed the hungry heart. 
So the church is in a state of delusion. She's under 